Hello again everyone, it's your boy Matt, hope you're having a wonderful day, thanks for joining me. We're talking about the beloved F-35, the technological masterpiece that it is. So many people ask me to talk about this jet constantly, and it's on the forefront of military technology. Of course, why wouldn't people want to talk about such an incredible piece of aviation history? It's in, It's just beautiful. I mean, I really do love the F-22, it is my favorite fighter jet out there, but in close second F-16, and I would say third place would be the F-35, in just terms of its technological advancements and what it's capable of, it's pretty impressive. Now, the F-35 is no doubt one of the most highly discussed and debated aircraft in the modern world. It is strewn with controversy, incredible capabilities, overwhelmingly large financial commitments, and the most broad range of global influence that a fighter has ever had for the 21st century. But what is it that makes this such an amazing piece of aviation become so prestige in its stance across the fighter jet world? Is it the fact it has an incredible stealth capability, or that it has a wide range of roles that it can perform? Is it the fact that it's the most versatile combat aircraft available that has successfully reached into the wallets of many nations around the world and taken everything it can find and spend it on a lot of bling? Well, it's all of those things combined, really. What truly, though, makes the F-35 stand out is its technological and engineering value that it brings to the table among some of the most complex fighters available today. The F-35 is without a doubt a flying computer, with a pilot who somewhat tells it what to do. The aircraft has a lot more computing power than, say, Skynet on steroids. Which, when we talk about networks and technology involving computers, Skynet type systems where robots take over the world is a little... scary. Now I am not a conspiracy theorist or anything like that, I don't believe robots are going to take over the world, but it does make you wonder if the F-35, being basically a flying computer network, could it be hacked like one? Now you would think the aircraft, being so advanced, would be very resistant to hacks or intrusion, just like Surfshark VPN, who are kindly sponsoring today's video. Just like any network, there are always ways to defend you and your computer, and I'm pretty sure if the F-35 did have a VPN, it would be as beefy as an A-10 on a gun run. Surfshark VPN provides you with the A-10-like BERT capability when it comes to protecting your network. Surfshark's capabilities like the F-35 are impressive, with features like securing your data with industry-leading measures by using uncrackable encryption and the most secure VPN protocols. It also provides IP and DNS leak protection so that no one can find where you're connecting from. Like a sidewinder tracking onto a MiG-29, the VPN also has multi-hop features which allows you to put two VPN servers between you and the online destination. Almost like an online flare dispenser. Just like the F-35's global exposure, Surfshark has over 3,200 plus servers in 65 countries and allows you to watch shows from other countries and not have to worry about the blocks on certain geographical locations. It's fast and easy to use as you connect to the server that offers you the best speed by default and jam-packed with features that go way beyond the basics. Now, if you are interested, one subscription allows you to install and run Surfshark on an unlimited number of devices at the same time with 24-7 live customer support. If you do want to give this a try and want to give Surfshark VPM a go, check their three month free trial by clicking in the link below in the description box. Go to the site and enter the promo code MATSMUS for 83% off and an extra three months for free. And if you don't like it, then Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you try it and you don't like it, you can simply cancel your subscription and be on your merry way. So let's get back to talking about the F-35 being hacked. What's the capabilities of this particular situation happening? Is it feasible? Is it something that is really a reality? Well, to understand this, we have to take a look at what the aircraft is truly made up of. The aircraft has incredible integration to artificial intelligence and the use of sensors and systems to make the pilot more able to operate it with extreme precision and stealth focus in mind. The computers on board are relying on massive architectural software that is not only allowing the aircraft to fly and fight, but also communicate with the broader network which the F-35 was designed to support. 
from advanced data links to huge databases of threat information, the F-35 is a hacker's dream for anyone who wanted to draw upon information that could be used in their own weapons. One thing people expect when you talk about hacking software on an aircraft is the risk to its function, and that the reality is though that the sort of information that someone would want from the F-35 is its key data and information that can be stolen and used to deter or supersede its systems completely. For example, why would you want to hack an F-35 to initiate, say, a crash or a launch of a missile on a runway, for example, when in reality you're going to get a lot more out of capturing key information from its systems that can then be adapted to destroy or neutralize the entire fleet if it came down to it? For an example, if you could hack into the system and take across its entire architectural database of how the radar and stealth systems inside of it work, that could be used in your own jamming equipment or detection equipment from the ground or air so that your own aircraft can knock it out the sky prior to even flying. The data could also be used to improve enemy jamming systems, ISTAR, communications monitoring, or even worse than anything is the access to more complex systems in flight such as the AWACS, being able to hack into the full network and mainframe of the aircraft itself. But this is all pure speculation and as I said somewhat Skynet sort of capabilities. The greater advantage afforded by advanced computing and new generation of processing speeds that AI enables algorithms to have is also the greater need to harden that system to ensure it's sufficiently resilient. The reality is not lost, for example, upon Lockheed, who develops the Air Force cyber specialists who have in recent years been immersed in an accelerated effort to secure weapon systems and major platforms against cyber attackers. The American Air Force for several years now has been taking strides with ambitious yet crucial efforts known as the Cyber Resilience Office for Weapon Systems, or CROWS. The concept for the office, established by the Air Force Material Command several years ago, is grounded upon the premise that countermeasures and cyber protection, such as emerging technologies such as boot shield or countervail, need to be baked in early and layered into prototypes for weapon systems early in the developmental process. Along with the well-known sensor fusion, able to organize and display crucial targeting, surveillance, avionics, and navigational data on a single screen for pilots, there are a range of systems on the F-35 which rely heavily upon advanced computing. Other systems on the F-35 engineered for greater levels of automation include the Automic Logistics Information System, or ALIS, a logistics and sustainment computer which, among other things, assesses health and maintenance of the avionics, engine systems, and other aircraft functions. The idea is to replace the necessity of manual checks by engineering computers able to perform more systematic functions of its own. Computer technology increasingly organizes, integrates, and presents information for the pilots with improved efficiency and graphical user interface. Developers often refer to this as easing the cognitive burden so that the dynamic human mind can better direct its energy towards tasks that are uniquely able to perform such as problem solving and communicating with the rest of the task force. But the easing of the burden to the pilot adds more burden to the programmers, coders and software developers who are designing the aircraft subsystems. As much money has gone into the design of the aircraft that it flies and engineered to do so, has also gone into who designs the software to make sure that if the pilot presses the wrong button on the aircraft, it doesn't let go of all the data that could ruin the Air Force's integrity or information of technical specs or stealth attributes. Remember that these aircraft can now carry nuclear weapons, and unlike the days where B-52 crews of the Cold War have a team in the back of the aircraft focusing on the weapon systems and the control of the launch, the pilot of the F-35 is on their own, able to destroy an entire city if they wish to. With that much power at the hands of the pilot, you would expect the jet to take some of the burden when it comes to interaction with flying, radar focus, and communication with the rest of the fighting force. The F-35's distributed aperture system, a suite of sensors around the aircraft that provides pilot 360 degree view of the battle space, is another example of advanced compute integration. The aircraft's electro-optical targeting system, or EOT, is also in the same category. The F-35's mission data files as well, a compilation of data library known as specific threats to designating threat areas across the globe, represents the kind of system that simply must not be hacked. Should an intruder destroy, derail, or infect the database with the wrong information, attacking F-35 pilots could face complete mission failure. Therefore, the threat of information which continues to grow more elaborate and extensive to incorporate emerging threats needs to be both accessible for the sensors and fire control systems needed by the pilots, yet also completely hardened against external attack. This phenomenon, whereas cybersecurity threats continue to rapidly expand well beyond IT and data systems to reach larger platforms and weapon systems, is often discussed in terms of a two-fold trajectory. 
While advanced computer processing, sophisticated algorithms and better networked weapons and fire control systems bring unprecedented combat advantages, increased cyber reliance can also increase the risk in key aspects. The increasingly serious cyber threat to major platforms and weapon systems is by no means restricted to the F-35. For instance, successful hacking or cyber intrusions could disrupt vital targeting and guiding systems needed for precision weapons, derail computer-enabled aircraft navigation and targeting, or even seek to change the flight path of a drone or an ICBM. Crows is also designed to harvest the best thinking when it comes to anticipating potential enemy cyber attacks. But let's take a look at something like the F-22, the F-35's beautiful older sister, my favourite fighter jet in the world. The F-22 program was killed at the height of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan in an effort to reshape the US military. The F-22 was designed as an air superiority fighter to take on advanced fighters from China and Russia in air combat, and not support troops on the ground. At the time, American troops were focused on insurgencies in ground combat. Until the terrorists started flying F-14s, there was little perceived threat of need of such a fighter. Now that the US military is refocused on great power wars, the need for such a program is becoming more apparent again. The F-22 is one of the fastest combat aircraft in the United States Air Force, even after the development of the F-35. It can detect and attack enemy aircraft from miles away, even if the enemy isn't yet able to detect the incoming Raptor. In one instance, a Raptor was able to pop up from underneath two Iranian F-4 Phantoms and tell them to just go home, which they promptly did, presumably to change their shorts. Just the presence of a Raptor in a battle space is enough to clear the skies of enemy aircraft. In a great power war with a country like China, the Raptor would be an indispensable part of the Air Force in order of battle. Raptors quickly disperse in order to keep China from targeting them with ballistic missiles. Their stealth and air combat capabilities would also be used to escort C-17s and frustrate Chinese fighters, as well as Chinese efforts to jam their communications. That's due to the large point of the pilot's advanced training and advanced stealth technology. But the reason that the hackers couldn't hack their computer systems is something different altogether. The technology of this aircraft is more than 35 years old. You have to remember that the F-25 or JTF program has been for a long time in the making. When the $65 billion fighter jet was cut from the Pentagon budget, there was a lot of joking surrounding the fighter, that the United States had developed a weapon that it would never use in combat. After all, until that point, the F-22 hadn't flown a combat mission over either two wars of the US as actually fighting. Former Navy Secretary John Lemon found a silver lining telling Wall Street Journal that at the very least the plane's computer net technology was safe from hacking. No one in China knows how the program from 83 vintage IBM software runs, and therefore wouldn't be able to be hacked. Ten years later, the F-22 has definitely flown combat sorties over Syria and the rise of China and Russia with their fifth generation fighters definitely puts it on its toes. Some of the technology stolen from the United States might have the Pentagon wishing they had more Raptors. For the F-35 though, it's learnt to be more adapted to a newer stage of IT systems available. Raytheon is among a handful of weapons and technology innovators working to engineer new methods of protecting data transfer on serial buses for aircraft like the F-35. One product in particular called Cyber Anomaly Detection or CAD system uses machine learning and other advanced algorithms to identify intrusions. CADS analyzes traffic on the bus and detects it in real time if there is a threat. It acts as an intrusion detection system detecting anomalies and behavior in message content, sequence, timing, and other factors. Serial buses on older aircraft and combat vehicles may be particularly vulnerable in some instances, and a circumstance now driving the ongoing Pentagon initiatives to better safeguard data transfer using new industry-developed technologies. These are traditionally so, so slow speed serial buses that they don't have any native security. It's difficult to add security without significantly re-architecturing the entire system. But at the end of the day, it's really hard to define if something is hack-proof. If something's created by man, then something that man creates to get by that thing created by man is possible. A lot of people talk about systems that are impenetrable, and really it's quite difficult to have one. For instance, there was a system that was built for Visa, as we know, the credit card company, which was supposed to be impenetrable. It involves a primary system that, once up and running, retires the root account. It can only be accessed by a slave system that responds to only certain instructions encoded in a particular way and only known by the two systems. Both systems use a form of SSL, which is changed every three milliseconds. Encryption is developing at a huge pace. I mean, for instance, just looking at what I've provided today with Surfshark VPN, a very, very capable and secure system. But the F-35 is not impenetrable, and whether it's connected to the internet or not, the system does have its flaws that could somewhat either be jammed or hacked from the sky or on the ground. 
However, it's safe to also say that the F-35 has had so much input to prevent these kind of intrusions happening that I don't think we're going to have any of them falling out the sky or do anything crazy for the formidable future. Thank you so much for watching today, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something about the F-35 and its capabilities in terms of IT infrastructure and hacking. Let's hope it doesn't ever happen. And I also hope that these aircraft never have to go into full combat into that kind of situation of jamming radar or any kind of, you know, intrusion detection because something has obviously gone very, very wrong. But I appreciate you stopping by. If you did enjoy today's video, please leave me a like and leave me a comment in the comment section below. Also, if you did enjoy the content and want to be notified of any upcoming videos in the future, click the little bell by the subscribe button so you can be notified next time of when I produce a video. You can also go check out my PayPal and my Patreon, which once again I'd like to thank everyone for contributing towards in the description box below. It really does mean a lot. You can also become a member of my channel uh, by clicking the membership button beside the subscribe button and also my social media links below with Facebook, Discord and Instagram, etc. Thanks so much for stopping by and I'll see you in the next video. All the best. Bye bye.